Okay, let's get started. Today we'd like to answer the question, why should you use Chrome for digital signage and kiosks? We're going to walk through a few things, where the industry is at currently, where we're going, and what we want to see happen as a whole for digital signage in the future. A little bit about who we are and who I am. We are Araya Digital Signage Suite. We are a software as a service digital signage off offering. Uh, we're completely cloud-based and we're building our software on top of the Chrome platform for reasons I'm going to outline in this presentation. My name is Walter Moore. I'm the lead developer of Araya and I oversee all of the, the technical aspects of our platform along with working with our team to make sure our direction fits our clients' needs. First, let's go through a little history about the past, the present, and the future of digital signage. The past of dig digital signage is pretty familiar to most people. We've all seen screens that have the blue screen of death, messages up on them that should not be showing, things about updates, um, or like this billboard in the Ukraine, even a message saying that it crashed. Um, we've all seen these messages, and this is what we want to try and move away from in our digital signage. Currently, we do have a few options. We still have the old way of doing things. We also have some newer Android devices and different offerings in that platform. And we also have a number of mystery, bro mystery box proprietary platforms. If we want to keep doing what we're doing, I think this quote fits pretty well. Insanity is repeating the same mistakes and expecting different results. We're putting up the same signage with the same operating system as before and expecting something different to happen. We want to change that. Presently, we do have some new offerings in the Android market, but there's a lot of question marks. Each device is a little bit different. Each manufacturer customizes them a little differently. And there's some question marks on what happens after the purchase of the device. What version of Android does the device come with? Are there any OS upgrades in the future? What about hardware support? Can you plug a touch screen into it? On the security side, how, for, how secure is the firmware? What's pre-installed on the device? What other applications are already running in the background? And are they needed for digital signage? The other problems we find with the Android devices are the supply chains. We can often get stuck waiting for devices to be delivered, or even you might order the same device, the same revision, and find out later that it's actually did different hardware. Most people are familiar with proprietary devices and the problems that, that come about because of them. You're often faced with vendor lock-in, devices that only talk to that vendor's devices, costly upgrades when the vendor releases new versions or new devices. You end up paying for duplicated efforts so that you're paying that manufacturer to develop the same feature that has been standardized across other platforms. Some of them still have manual operating system updates, leaving your IT department in the middle of things to make sure that security and updates are, are in place. Many of these devices have limited performance and limited features compared to the other universal devices. The future is where we want to focus. In the future, we want to be able to talk about interactive content, people using touch screens, people using their phones. We also want to be able to talk about true dynamic content, messaging that changes based on the person standing in front of it, messaging that changes based on the weather outside. We also want to look at digital out of home. Right now, we talk about one screen and one location or where we're going to place this monitor so people can view it. What about all the other screens and all the other locations you could be showing that content? This gets into bring your own device and content on demand. More and more people have their own devices in their hand, and they want to be able to pull up that content on their own when they want to be able to see it. Return on investment is a big word these days in digital signage, mostly because a lot of platforms had no way to measure return on investment. We think this is a big key piece of the future. Another big piece of the future for us is APIs and integrations. With all the new connected devices and all the different ways that we can talk to other services, we think we'll see some new mashups and some new creations by combining different services through other APIs and integrating those services together to provide new experiences. Our focus is bringing this all to the present. We're focused on the future. We want this stuff right now. 
So what are our goals? Well, we want to take the programmer out of the digital signage. We want to make it so people aren't worried about downloading software and what version they have. We want to be able to make it so they can create their own content that is then displayed on any device. And we want them to be able to send that link out to anyone else so that they can have other people view their content and measure the reach and return on that content. We want to make it so our clients can focus on the content, the reach of that content, and the return on their investment. We want to make it easy by letting them use nothing but a browser and the content that they need to create. That brings us to the question, why Chrome? How does Chrome fit into this? Chrome's platform is fast, secure, flexible, and scalable. The Chrome platform fits with our goals because it's fast, it automatically updates, it's using the latest technology, and all of this combines to build a platform that lets us focus on the latest in digital communications rather than trying to keep devices running and managing hardware. Why Chrome? Maybe on the philosophy side of things. The way Chrome is organized is really fits with our goals well. They're forward thinking, always looking at the latest technology and the next step in the evolution of the web. It's a widely installed browser with a growing user base. It's one of the few true cross-platform and cross-device browsers. It's an active development, has an open development model where we can all participate in the development. It also has a clear life cycle so we know what features are going to be present in the future and when they're going to be present so we can actually plan for the future. And all of this ties into the open source Chromium project where what's going on under the hood we can actually see. If we see a bug, if we want to look at the code of what's powering our displays, we can do that by looking at the open source Chromium project. Why Chrome on the technology side? Being, you know, beginning of this list is a couple current trends, HTML5 and CSS3. A couple new ones that we can already start to use today in Chrome with HTTP2 and ES6. And a whole list of other APIs and things that have enabled us to bring true digital signage into the browser. Things we weren't able to do before, like actually use webcams and do media capture. Offline support. What happens if that device isn't connected to the internet? We have web workers now that can actually do jobs in the background so that our main, our main content can be focused. There's also a number of new ways we can manage that, that browser and the content that's displaying in it. And a lot of new device APIs that are very unique because they let us have a browser and a web page that can talk to true hardware devices. One of the limiting factors in the future was people needed a certain piece of hardware to be able to connect to devices. If you wanted to have a push button trigger content on your kiosk, you had to have specific hardware and devices in that chain. And there was no way to make a browser talk to those devices for security reasons. Now, with Chrome's platform, we can actually talk to hardware devices. Whether that's a barcode scanner or whether that's a serial input, we now have access to those. So what are some of the results of this? We're able to take these technologies and put them together with our software to provide a creative studio where people can now create content and actually get the content that they're creating in real time pushed out to remote displays. On the left, you can see someone actually editing their content. Everything you see is what you, what you see is what you get because it's all browser-based. And on the right-hand side, you can see the result. And this is an actual client. One of my favorite ways to show off the results of the technology and how this makes things easier for people is this quick example video. We wanted to see just how fast and how easy it was to integrate third-party content with our signage. So we actually timed ourselves. It takes about seven seconds to copy and paste a YouTube URL into our editor. And from there, you can display that YouTube video on your signage. What about interactive content? We feel interactive content is a big piece of the future. Traditionally, it's been very hard to create and required many people involved, especially in the programming side. Once you were done, distributing that content was typically very limited. Using these newer technologies in the Chrome platform, we've been able to make it so people can create interactive content in their browser without any programming. Anybody can go and make pages and touch points and link things together. And the result is something that's cross-browser and cross-device and can be displayed on any resolution or screen size. 
all of a sudden this interactive is not just stuck at that kiosk at the location. Anybody can share the URL and bring it up where they feel like it. Because of some of the other technology enhancements, we have access to things like multi-touch. And even create integrated experiences through interactive HTML5 widgets and games. To measure the return on this interactive content, we have real-time analytics. You can know who's clicking on what, when they clicked on it, and what was going on at the system at that time. We feel anyone can use Araya. This is a testimonial from one of our users. Nolan Jessen's a 15-year-old at Linmar Robotics who put together an array of page to display their robotics information, along with a live stream from YouTube for one of their events. Nolan's comment about array was that array is a great tool for anyone of any age with any amount of technical knowledge. So one of our other results from this technology that we've been talking about, talking about is how you can view this content everywhere. All of a sudden, we have a URL for our content. Digital signage is no longer wrapped up in some third-party program or third-party language. It's HTML. So you can view your content on any device. If you have remote devices, things like signage on the wall or a kiosk at a remote location, you can use Chrome device management to remotely manage the device. You can freely share your link to anyone. You can post it on social media. And through our real-time platform and these, these technologies, you can push your changes instantly to the screens. Using the same real-time back end, once you have that content out in the wild, you can begin to measure what's going on. Because we have these, these newer technologies like WebSockets, we have things like real-time charts, uh, real-time maps. So as someone views that content, a pin pops up on the map to show their location. We have event streams, so you can actually stream live what someone is doing on your kiosk. Which brings us to why Chrome devices? How do they fit into this Chrome platform? Chrome devices are a big piece of this. They're fast, they're secure, they have automatic updates, unlike some of the other devices that I mentioned. They also have a very important feature called kiosk mode. Kiosk mode lets us lock down the device to only display the content we want displayed. This is traditionally a problem on some of the other platforms like Windows. We have full offline support, so we don't have to worry about what happens when we don't have an internet connection. And using Chrome device management, we can remotely manage and deploy Chrome devices. We can break them down into groups, and we can push different content to different devices. It could be one device, or it could be thousands of devices. Mary Greeley Medical Center was our first deployment for a Chrome device. By the time we got done, we had a pretty happy client. Jason's comment says, the array program itself is very easy to use, it's great to be able to log in on any computer and control the content on the signage from the cloud. This is exactly the response we were hoping to get. We want to make it easy for our clients to log in where they are and manage their signage. OK, I'm going to go ahead and conclude this presentation. Uh, if you have any other questions that we weren't able to get to today, uh, go uh, feel free to go ahead and send us an email, info at Aurea.com. Or you can reach us through social media on our Google Plus page, on Twitter, on Facebook. Um, go ahead and ask any questions that you have, and thanks for viewing.